This is my sketchbook 30 some years ago, and now I'm going to ask the AI to redo this one. So I adjusted her size, little dark skin Valkyrie anime girl with mid hair cut ruffle hair locks, silver chest protector, metal plated, legs and heel fireballs in her right arms, negative prompts, I'm not going to read it because it's going to take a lot of time. This is important, this is a DDDN and it's set to 50, sampling steps and quality number 9, CGP scale. So let's generate. Well, look at these results. You have to consider that the anime style does not match whatever I did 30 some years ago, but this is the closest thing and it looks good. Bear in mind that you will not acquire the same exact results, but at least this will give you a head start to start redesigning your character. Welcome to a new video. Today we're going to use the image to image tab to take a very old drawing of mine and see if we can come up with something interesting to show you how to create dark skin anime bulky girl warrior. These are my settings for the sampling step, also the width and height of the image. I am also using a batch count for this uh, generations, like two columns for iterations, and the seed is minus one. So today we're going to talk about how important it is this seed number. Whenever it is set to minus one, it's going to generate a random uh, creation. But if you have the seed specific number, then you can stick together to the most appealing image that you see on the generation. Next, I'm going to click on generate because you have already seen how this works in the one minute preview. So this is our results. Not bad, not bad at all. We can see that the hair is looking pretty good. Please remember that anime girl designs usually have this um, longer hair appeal. Uh, not very much uh, with locks because it will be harder to draw for each frame. All right, so let's talk about the seed number we can see that this is the current seed number generated for our image and we want to take focus on this 16 that we have right here so this is number 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 and 23 and of course you can go on and on so i'm going to be focusing on number 21 so i'm going to copy this entire seed copy it just control C and then paste it control V over here and then I'm going to switch this to number 21 and this will generate my specific seed regarding the image so now I'm going to save all of this because once I regenerate everything will be erased so this is after one minute or so then I get all my new batches and this of course starts with number 21 from the seed and then I get the next and following generated images like this one, for example, can work. This is not that much good. This one totally deviates from the original concept, although the armature or, or the shields look good. This pose is kind of great. This pose is looking good. This is going to work. So I'm going to save this as one of the variations we may use later on. And just like we were saying before, uh, the reason why we never see this kind of hair in anime is because it's very difficult to draw. Uh, let alone that a dark skinned girl is almost uh, not very much participant in any adventure. So, okay, you know what? Take that back. Yes, there are a lot of dark skinned girls like this beauties that you're seeing right here. Because, uh, of course, if you watch anime, you do know that those are like the queen in their own game. Anyway, so let's continue with the tutorial. Let's focus again. I'm going to be picking a new variation. In this case, it's number 28. So I'm going to start with that number number 28 from the images and then I'm going to upscale my sampling settings to 60 this way I'll get a better image and next I'm going to be focusing on the width and height because we want to create images that are longer you know more than wider so I'm going to press generate after using that seed and here are the results and of course you can now see that the skins are better uh, are dar they are looking darker this is the one that it's going to be the one where we're going to work um, all right these are decent results why am I choosing this because as I mentioned before it is very difficult to create this kind of variations or this kind of this kind of character designs for anime so now we're going to use the most appealing image from the results and the way you do that is to come here to image to image and now we're going to select the one that we just generated in this case it's it's this one right here 
Although she's missing an arm, don't worry about it. We are going to talk about that later on. And then we have our prompt words. And now I want to uh, change the seed back to minus one so that I will get random generated images from that original image. And I'm also going to lower, lower the uh, quality because I want quickly generated images. So now let's check out the results. This is one minute after uh, pressing generate. I'm fast forwarding this so that you can see it. And yes, they are looking pretty good. The armor design is, is actually neat. It's really great. It's giving me more ideas on how I can upgrade my character. Please remember that I drew this character when I was around, well, I don't know, too many years ago. And it, it was not um, like the ultimate version. But this version, for example, gives me a lot of new ideas for the armor and this can work. So now let's talk about the image size. This is a very small image size. So what can we do once we select the image that we want? Let's upscale it. We are going to use the extra tabs that we have right here and then we can feed it, feed the image that we want to upscale. And we're going to talk about a little bit about the, um, the functions that we have there for the filter. Filtering this uh, image will allow us to upscale it, okay? So this is our original image and we're not going to change anything here, but this is where you resize your parameters. And this is the upscaler one. We of course need some sort of a filtering image algorithm to you know work there filter actually <laughs> so that we can get more focused colors more focused edges and stuff like that so let's just press generate and see what we can up with oh before i forget up here we have single image batch processes and folder processes so you can you know batch process everything in one go so right now it, it was almost in instantaneously generated so the app scale is two but we do not have any kind of sharpening or focusing um, filter. So let's save this so that we can compare this later on. So we're going to call this upscale. And from here, we're going to take this image to Photoshop. And I'm going to be scaling this around 400% so that you can see how this image looks. It's very, very low quality. Okay, so now let's try a different thing. Let's combine two upscalers to see what kind of results we get. So I'm going to use Langsus, which is like very sharp and focused, and also a, a, a second upscaler, another Langsus. What that will create, it's just a focus image, and again, the focus. It's focused twice. You can see it right here, the upscale is two, the model has been used with Langsus twice, and this is our result. So now I'm going to switch this to three times the size, that we have right now, but I'm going to be using a different combination. What I first want to do is to create a focus image and then focus colors. That's why I'm using LDSR. By the way, if this is being helpful to you, please do not forget to subscribe. I'm really hoping that you like this content so that you can uh, visit my channel some more. So after five minutes of generating this image, the upscale three times, three X, uh, we're going to save this and we're going to take this to Photoshop. As you can see, the details here work much better than the last time. So this is like the two times scaled, and this is going to be 400 scale, having more details, more colors, very sharp edges, and of course, there is a lot of retouching that we can do here. Don't forget that supporting patrons get access to all of these images. All right, so let's compare the original size at 400 level, and this is at 400 with both Langsos and this LDSR focus. You can read the text boxes up here. And that's it, that's how you get a dark skin anime Valkyrian girl. Get the prompt in the video description. Last but not least, I wanted to focus into the negative words. I am back into the image to image tab. This text box allows you to input negative prompt. That means what you do not want into the picture. So I'm going to just paste all of this. You can read it, you can pause it, you can also copy them from the video description below. So you need this. Why? Because sometimes, just like this example right here, you will get deformed arms. 
I can fix this easily if I go with a paint over in, and create a specific arm. So that's why you, you have all of these buttons, for example, sent to in paint so that you can, you know, draw your mask and then ask the AI generator to generate an arm for this character. And it will, it will work. But you can do that manually, you know, because it's just an arm. It's not something difficult. Anyways, so you don't want anatomy. You don't want this figure anatomy. You don't want the form. Anyways, you will want to use all of these words so that stable diffusion will avoid creating this kind of monstrosities. Okay. Also, bear in mind that you have this uh, parentheses to use a certain word prompt with prominence. That means that the word that is enclosed in the parentheses is going to have more value than the other ones over here. Why? Because in stable diffusion, the order in which you write your prompts, it's going to decide how important, how much priority that generating prompt is going to have over the other ones. So this is why you always want to use the camera lens and position all the way at the end, or and also the artist art style. Having double parentheses helps you to like minimize right under the first priority word. So in our case, it was a black anime girl, and then it's followed by dark skin. And then you would say, Mr. Schiller, why did you just write dark skin all the way over here inside the same parentheses? No. You want to isolate which is your priority word so that will guide the rest of the train words that you're using for creating your character, okay? So that's why you can use them uh, in separate places, but you want to prioritize whatever follows after that with a double parenthesis. So this is like level one, this is like level two in priorities. And now for the things that you want less attention to, let's say Victoria's post is not something very important for me, you're going to use brackets. And closure in a word inside a bracket means that it's not really that much important. The same thing is going to happen if I double bracket this. This is not very important inside the order of the words that I have already decided. But let's just use one uh, bracket. Another thing that I wanted to say is the sampling method. Right now I'm using Euler because I'm about to regenerate a character again. But all of these create different results. Okay, so you, you're, you're going to have to experiment which one is going to work with the art style that you want. So I, I seriously, I'm going to take a gamble right now, but I usually use DDIM for models with, which have anime characteristics. But I've seen a lot of people using Euler and Euler A for different stuff. But the one that I recommend for illustrations in this case, as you're going to see right now, it's Euler. But all of these have different train models for photography, for outdoors, for architectural constructions, for vehicles. This is important. And obviously for illustration. Another one thing I wanted to say is that the width and the height will influence the AI to create certain characters. So when you ask for a character sheet, you would want the width of the generated images larger than the height. And obviously you're going to use the character sheet prompt word. Okay, for all of the details that you want to know about this, you can visit my Patreon, you can follow me there. Please consider supporting me so you will get access to more information for creating characters, for creating designs that will help you in your animation journey, specifically mixing things from Blender and obviously AI. Any other questions you have, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.